Hello. Sorry, it took me ages. I didn't know I'd actually press the record. Welcome to EastEnders Chatter Channel. Oh gosh, what is going on in the world of Albert Square and on the um, on the boat? And oh my goodness, I'm sorry I haven't updated before this. So who's got the money? We thought Ben had it, didn't we? Well, did you actually? Because after the um, arches got broken into, I was thinking, nah, Ben's not got that money. <coughs> um, because he checked the the parcel didn't he but of course it was just exactly the same to his eye but you and I was thinking ah but is that money in there or isn't it so now we know it isn't he's got that other watch of money what is going on who are they talking about those two ladies the one that was Mel do you remember she was married to Steve and I think he used to own the pub didn't he before it became Roxy and Ronnie's pub um, the bar the club you know um, so yeah Mel she's come back a little blast from the past and uh, and the Irish ladies you know Aidan's ex what's going on I'm a bit flummoxed I'm a bit confused um, so yeah and I'm also a bit confused about the Masood and Ian feud does that come because of Jane do you think and why did Ian decline the call from Jane and never ring her back I was thinking like surely she's spoken to Tanya surely she knows now that it's all okay and she can come back why has she not come back has she not come back because maybe she doesn't want to maybe she's met somebody else there must be a story there must be a reason because if she's so in love with Ian like she was when she was so upset to go why is she not back I mean, there may be a reason that the writers haven't written her back in because of like personal reasons for the character that plays Jane. I don't know all their real names. I know some, but not many. Um, but perhaps she's, I don't know, gone on a world cruise or something and is not back for a little while. So she's got to have a bit longer away from Ian. Don't know. Um, is Tanya coming back? Tanya's kind of done a bit of a, that was a bit of a cameo appearance, wasn't it? <laughs> or Tanya, how do you say it? Tanya or Tanya? Leave it in the comments down below. I don't know how you're going to write that. Tanya to Tanya. 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 I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, that's all going on. Poor Abby. That's a really sad story. Um, now, I want to talk about that, actually. Uh, being a bit jumpy around here, as always. Because I feel for Max. I've been in that situation almost identically with my dad. Uh, I won't go into that because this story is about East End. This channel is about East Enders and not about my personal stories. But my dad had um, brainstem death, and we weren't told that he was already actually dead. Um, but that was harsh. But I understand why that consultant did it. Now, the character playing that consultant is fabulous. I'm loving the way that he's dealing with that, dealing with Max. I think that he's strong but yeah I just think that is how if you've got a really nice consultant I just think that is how they would be and when he said about you know respecting Abby's dignity um, I totally get that and he's you got to be you've got to let that selfish thing go but it's hard when you're in that situation and you've got to make that decision to switch those machines off and just let that body go it's really really hard and even although I was told like I say exactly the same thing really that my dad's um <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me brainstem um he's had a stroke in his brainstem and it basically you know just killed everything off the brainstem is the part that controls all the major stuff in the body like your heartbeat your breathing your temperature your blood pressure and all of that so all of that that he was being kept alive on is like it was the machines that were keeping him alive and we 100% made the decision no those machines have got there's no point trying to fight to keep him alive because they said to us the only thing he'd ever be able to do would be blink his eyes he wouldn't be able to do anything else um he wouldn't be able to feed himself he wouldn't be able to breathe so he'd have lots of like holes going into the body which then predisposes you to infection all that sort of thing so i understand how Max is feeling and I think they've portrayed that absolutely brilliantly and I also understand how everybody else is trying to convince him to let her go I just think that storyline the way they've dealt with that is perfect um, and also I understand you clinging on to the whole miracle thing because 
I won't talk about this too much, but when they did turn my dad's machines off, I expected him to instantly just fade away, and that wasn't the case. For three hours, he was breathing on his own. Um, his heart was beating so, so hard that he, his body was actually moving the bed. The bed was shaking every time his heart beat. So I was there thinking, and I actually whispered to him, I said, Dad, if you're gonna pull a miracle out of the bag, now's your time to do it. So I understand that a family member so close as Max would be with Abby, that you think miracles can happen. I do understand that, and that's just been brilliant. How they're gonna end this, I don't know. That's gonna be quite a tearjerker, I think. Obviously, if you've been through something like that, you're gonna feel that. No doubt they left the things up at the end to say, if you've been affected by this story, ring this number. And I would encourage you, if you have been affected by that, to tap into that, because, you know. Um, anyway, so enough of that. Um, so what's going on with the J and the Ben and the everything? Who's got the money? So obviously, everyone's done a runner, haven't they? We've got Mick has gone. Um, and that's just brought me on to Masood, actually. Now, Masood and Karen. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that was about a week ago now, that storyline. But wasn't that absolutely exquisite? when he was helping her out and all of the rest of it and she said come on have a bacon butty and he was like but I'm Muslim and she was like I'll cut the fat off did you see his face when she said I'll cut the fat off his face was kind of like as if to say like okay that's not quite right but I appreciate your efforts and I just thought how sweet was that that was just brilliant sure pure eastenders gold that was and masood oh my god i love him so much his character's brilliant i still stand by what i said he's had a change of personality and i don't like it but i think he's coming back to the old mass i think they wanted to bring him in with a bang and they've certainly done that um so well done eastenders as always loving what's being produced i'm a day behind actually which is great because it's wednesday today and i wednesday's evenings i'm normally free and there's no blinking eastenders to watch so i'm like Arr. so yeah i'm going to be watching that tonight and um, that's last night's one. Oh, so as we saying all this about where's the money you might know that by now ah you saw right you can leave your comments and your spoiler alerts i won't look at them until i've come back on after i've watched it sorry i sound a bit like a man today i've got a weird thing going on here which uh, pretty much everybody in the whole world has got this cold at the moment and um busy trying to run around today looking after things mum and stuff like that it's all going on but I won't go into that if you wanted to find out more about my life and all that go over to my um, vlog channel just my name Louise Usher go and find it and um, meanwhile have a lovely Wednesday and I look forward to seeing you hopefully in a couple of days with another little one of these chit chats and um, so yeah obviously we're back from holiday now back to the old routines and I probably could do a bit more of this in the car and um, that said picking up a new car next week <coughs> don't know how it's gonna go with filming i need to go because i've got a really cough <coughs> bye